Look, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much for uh, taking the time for this. I know you're extremely busy. Thanks. There's a lot of talk going around about the increase and how large it was for council. Can you explain a little bit about that, sir? For sure. I think that's a, uh, a bit of a misrepresentation. Um, if we actually look at the raises it was indicated this year, it's a $20,115 raise divided amongst seven individuals. Uh, it is not the 55% or the 65% that are getting quoted. In fact, for myself, it's less than a 5% raise this year alone. In actual dollars, we're looking at about $1,600 over the course of the year uh, as the raise to the bottom line. So um, the numbers that are being used in terms of the percentage is a bit of a, a, a misidentification, if you will, or uh, an intent maybe to create controversy around something where there shouldn't really be any. Um, when I ran for this uh, position, I ran with the intent to leave Coburg in a better place in a variety of areas in a variety of ways. Uh, one clear way of doing that is ensuring that in four years, uh, if a single mother wanted to become the mayor of Coburg, that there would be the financial ability for someone like that to do it. Uh, at the current remuneration of $45,000, uh, that is not possible. Um, if we look at historically speaking, um, the position of mayor, and especially the last two mayors, have gone to retired men. Um, when we look at councillors as a whole in the history of Coburg, we look at retired, uh, often wealthy males are the ones who are able to fill these positions. I fundamentally believe that the more uh, diverse and representative a council can be, the better that council will represent the community and the better decisions it can make. We're very fortunate under this current council to have a very diverse group. Um, but that diverse group can only hold the position because every single one of them are either retired or have multiple streams of incomes running other businesses. Um, none of them would necessarily be able to live off just the wage of as a councillor position. And I just think it is my job to leave Coburg in a better place than I found it. By taking the suggested increase that was put to council by a member of the public uh, and reflecting on it, the, the reason we spaced it over three years is exactly what I've always stated, fiscal prudence. Uh, I believe it would have been fiscally irresponsible to bring up the council raises by $100,000 in year one. This is something that I believe is very important for the future success of councillors, of council and of this community. And in order to implement this before the four years is up, my suggestion was to take this and phase it over a three year period, being very careful to spread that $100,000 increase or $120,000 increase over the longest period possible, reducing the effect on the levy. Um, and that's what was eventually voted on. I'm really proud of this decision of council. I, I understand there's some negative pushback, but at the end of the year, I think the story needs to be told that this is a $20,000 raise this year between seven individuals. The majority of that raise is going to councillors and to the deputy mayor, because they are the ones that need to catch up the most. And that's the way this whole thing has been structured. Do you think though that it's, I guess it's not too much too early, but I mean, like in some in some businesses, corporations, a three months a three months, and then going into a raise is an even a probation period for some. Well, again, we're not seeing the raise here, Peter, and that's the other thing we need to talk about. Under this suggestion, under the motion that was passed, this raise doesn't come into effect till start until July of this year. And remember, July of this year is when the CIP index was already going to take effect. So. Council and the mayor and the deputy mayor were already going to be receiving a slight increase on the CPI index. All this motion has done is increase that raise a little bit more in order to, again, get us to the eventual rates that need to be for the next election. This wasn't some massive raise in the short term after three months. Again, July 1st is when the first increment of this raise happens. Further. All that was voted on was the first $20,000 of this raise. This raise then has to be a second vote next year, another vote on the 23rd. This isn't done and, and approved. Instead, what it is is it's the first issuance. What you are seeing is, again, me stepping forward and doing what I believe is right 
at the time, not necessarily what is right in the public's perception of making myself popular. This is a decision that was not taken lightly and I was very well aware of the flack that would come back. It's one of the reasons why I stepped forward and put the motion on the floor myself because I didn't expect councillors to take the heat for this. That's not what a leader does. The leader steps forward and puts the controversial motions forward so that they can receive the most negative feedback. And that's what's happening and I accept that and I, 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 I'm okay with it. It's part and parcel. This is no different than when I called transit a luxury or I started making the difficult and hard questions towards the library. In just three months, I am doing what I said I would do in the election. Question the status quo. Make often unpopular and difficult decisions in order to leave this town in a better place in four years. This, I believe, is the most fiscally responsible way to do what I believe is important. And that's again, that in four years, when the next election happens, to have salaries at certain levels, and again, no one's buying a Jaguar at a 65, 55, or $45,000 rate. These are not luxurious salaries that we're talking about here. We're talking about making a basic living wage. And I just think that needs to be talked about here. I understand the idea of giving a raise after three months is, is not sitting well, but ladies and gentlemen, this is the fiscally prudent way to achieve what needs to happen. And it's the way you do it, because again, if we wait till the third year and we bring the raises in, well, that's an unbelievable tax burden in that year. So what we're doing is instead is spreading that over a three year period. Again, it's not popular, but it's the right thing to do in my opinion. And so that's why we're doing it, or at least that's why I put it forward. Do you understand where the community though, you know, you explain it well now. Do you, under, do, you under, uh, do you understand, given all the um, things that were brought forward for council that we can't afford this, we can't afford that, then, then, you know, then this happens. I guess it's understandable for citizens to look out for, you know. Well, I, I don't think it's understandable. I think it's understandable based on the coverage we've been receiving. I think it's understandable that that's all that's being focused on. I mean, no one's writing, there was not a single article written about the county budget that passed at what, $140 million? No one's talking about the fact that every single transit rider costs the Coburg taxpayer $6,800. No one's talking about the fact that um, five or six wages in one department could, could cost the taxpayer $600,000. No one seems to be actually having the conversations about the largest of the different programs and instead are focusing on the one that gets the most media attention. Those councillors and mayor giving themselves this crazy hefty raise. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it isn't a crazy hefty raise. It's less than $20,000 between seven individuals. Can we not talk about the fact that the outdoor pool, which is now back on the agenda, is going to cost Coburg 15, 12 to $15,000 a week to stay open? $34 million were approved, $125,000 put aside for pickleball courts. Take it or leave it, but why aren't we talking about anything that actually uh, needs to change? This is something that needed to change, and it was something that I put forward to change. I've also been encouraging council and the public to start having very intentional conversations about other areas that need to change. And at the end of this budget process, it's just more of the same. And let's call it what it is. We've simply, as a council, pushed these decisions now for onwards because we weren't ready, able, or willing to make these difficult decisions this term. Were you, if I word this right, were you, were you disappointed that very few of the items that were brought up, I believe that they were voted down if I can if you understand where I'm going with this and forgive me I, I understand I think where you're going with this and yeah. I want to be very careful and I'll be very open I am bound by a code of conduct and in that code of conduct it clearly states to me that I must accurately communicate the decisions of council I must respect council's decision-making process and even if I disagree with council's ultimate decision I need to support that in the public thus I'm very limited on what I can and cannot say in terms of this process. I don't want to say I'm disappointed because that would say I had some levels of expectations. 
and I didn't. When I went into this process, as I've always said, I wanted to be accountable and transparent. It's really important. And so whether it was on my social media, whether it was news articles with yourself or letters to the editor, I was always very clear about what my intent was. And that's to start a discussion that we don't seem to be willing to have. And that's that we can't keep putting Band-Aid on top of Band-Aid on top of Band-Aid and expect something to change. That in order for real change to take place, we have to start deciding what we're gonna give up to allow for the resources, staff, uh, and time and effort to actually change things for the better. My hope going into this was that through the, um, some of the political controversy, if you will, that I stirred up in the public, that we would start hearing from the public about what needs to stay, what needs to go, and start hearing a more of a balanced perspective. I really want to commend my staff and the staff here at the town for putting forward ideas that were really out of the box. They took that sort of direction and said, you know what? Let's give some great new ideas. And they came. And those ideas were met with complete consternation. <laughs> and those ideas were met with um, uh, accusations of not caring about the environment, about not caring about the community. And that's really unfortunate because the staff was doing what the staff is supposed to do, suggest ideas and think outside the box. I'm again, not going to speak ill of anyone on council because I respect them beyond belief and I believe that they are all making decisions from the best place they can. Change is scary. Change is difficult and change upsets a lot of people. But I think all of council and myself have heard very clearly from the public, the status quo is not working. So my question then to you and to the public and to councils, if the status quo isn't working, but we're not willing to change anything, where are we gonna go from here? I, I don't have an answer at this point, Pete. We didn't go very, with the way the budget ended up, we didn't get very far then on reducing, or did we? I wanna be very clear. The staff got the initial budget to 5.5%, which was a feat considering where we were at prior to the budget coming to council. To the work and the suggestions of, of the staff to get to that place was a month's worth of work, if not longer, to, to, to sort of find those savings, to find a, and rethinking. And as a council, we then went and added on top of that based on um, the noises that we heard from the public. Hundreds of emails save our pool, hundreds of emails about the pickleball court, hundreds of emails about planting more trees. And so the council heard these voices and added those back on the budget. But no, Pete, um, my, job, oh, oh, my job is to see around corners. And I wanna be very clear about that. One of the successful things I've had in my career is the ability to see what's coming and to be right in history while wrong in the moment. And I think this is going to be another example of that. What's going to happen now, and this is just my two cents and my opinion, is that none of the difficult decisions we face this year were addressed. And all we've done is push them on to the next budget process. And so my concern is that not only are we seeing a 6.6 .6 plus 1.5% growth on the budget line this year, but that we're going to see those kind of numbers moving forward because we're not having the critical decisions, we're not making the critical decisions, we're not having the critical conversations about what needs to change to prevent that constant increase in the tax levy. And so for me, my, my, my hope going into this budget is that this would be the single year with a large tax levy and that after this, we could go to the public and say, hey, we're gonna keep a nice low tax levy to stay on top of this because we did what we needed to do in year one. By not sort of addressing those concerns in year one, my fear is that now we've simply pushed it one more year and that now we're gonna to have to make these very difficult decisions in the following year. Um, thankfully, by that time, we will have our strategic plan put together. Thankfully, that time, I'm sure uh, council will have bonded and come together a little more and learn to trust each other even more so. I think by that time, um, the staff are going to have more uh, experience working with both council and myself to sort of move in that direction. So I'm, I'm, I am trying to maintain a hopeful and an optimistic outlook. 
And I think the strategic plan is going to be really key in that moving forward because it's going to allow council to sort of see what our priorities are so that hopefully when we go into the 2024 budget, we're not necessarily listening to the loudest voices in the room, but instead we are deciding as a council based on our priorities that we've agreed to what can and can't stay. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate the time to, to have this interview.